How's it going folks? I'm Des with Desfit and this is the brand new Wahoo Element Bolt bike computer and this one's been a long time coming. The original Element Bolt came out over four years ago and it was basically a shrunken down version of their original Element bike computer. But with the second generation Bolt, they packed in all the features that are found on the Element Roam in a smaller package, but there's actually a few upgrades. Even though this is the second generation Bolt bike computer, Wahoo's still just calling this the Element Bolt, just like the original. So they're not calling it a Bolt 2 or Bolt V2, even though I think it actually deserves that name just because this new Bolt has a lot more features than the original. So I've been testing the new Bolt out for the last couple weeks and I've got a pretty good idea of what this device is all about and in today's video I'll be sharing my experiences with it, especially how it did for navigation and I'll also be talking about all the new hardware and software features and there's definitely quite a bit to talk about. All right, so first things first, we've got to get this thing out of the box and set up. So Wahoo always does a really nice job with their packaging and the new Bolt is no exception with a nice fold out explainer of all the main features. And then on the inside of the box, you'll find the unit itself, their out front mount, another mount that can be attached to your handlebars via zip ties, a charging cable, and some manuals. The new Bolt shares a very similar shape to the original Bolt with the same width and height, but it's just a smidge taller on the face of the unit. And the unit now has an edge to edge piece of Gorilla Glass, which creates a nice streamlined look like what you'd find on the Roam. So the new Bolt comes with a new display and let me tell you, this is probably one of my favorite things about this new device. It has a 2.2 inch color display, but it sports 64 colors versus the seven colors that are found on the Roam. And they definitely took advantage of all those colors. Like on the maps, you'll now see bike paths in blue, main roads are in yellow, but now with larger roads, they're shaded a little bit darker, like an almost an orange color. And there's also parks and open spaces in green. And the display is also super crisp. So there's a lot of detail and the lines are nice and smooth around the map. The Bolt 2 screen is physically smaller than the Roam, but it shares the exact same horizontal resolution, so there's a lot more pixel density and it really shows. Another area where they're utilizing that broader color palette are the data fields where there's a new zone color feature which indicates different zones for different types of fields. So like the heart rate field up top shows when I'm in a particular zone and the same deal with some power fields. So right here, you'll see my power zone change color as I accelerate where it goes from black, then to gray, to blue, and then to orange as I increase power. It still has the LEDs up top that can indicate the same thing, but I just find the zone colors on the screen itself to be incredibly useful feature just because they stick out. And then they also utilize these colors in these Strava Live segments where it highlights the completed portion of the segment in orange. Another hardware change are the front facing buttons where they aren't concave anymore like the original Bolt and Roam. They pretty much sit flush on the face of the device, but they're raised ever so slightly with a nice texture which helps you tell if you're on the button or not. They have a nice positive click to them and they work well, but I was sort of a fan of the concave buttons from the original, but still, these work just fine. The side buttons are slightly larger now and they also have a much better feel to them with a bit more positive click than the power button on the Roam and original Bolt where those were a little bit stiff and these feel just really, really nice. On the bottom of the device is the same type of flappy door to protect the charging port, but the original had a tendency of coming loose, but it looks to be improved where there's just a little bit larger nub, I guess you could say, which keeps the door a bit more secure. Oh, and then for what type of charging port it uses? That's right, folks, it's USB-C. Battery life is claimed to be up to 15 hours, and I think you could probably get that if you had the backlight disabled, but if you're using the auto backlight setting where it'll toggle the backlight on and off based on light conditions, I'd probably bank on more like 13 to 14 hours. But I was also curious about what this would do with like full blast settings with everything on. So I went on a ride with the backlight enabled the entire time. I was also using an Ant Plus heart rate monitor and power meter paired to the new Bolt, and I was also using navigation and playing around with it the entire time. And it was using about 11% of the battery per hour, so even in that worst case scenario, you could probably still get like nine to 10 hours out of it. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel a lot, quite a bit, and I appreciate it. The new Bolt comes with the same sort of out front mount that's found on the original Bolt as well as the Roam, where when you mount it, it creates a really nice sleek profile. But the new bolt mount is just slightly bigger than the original bolt mount. So what that means is that you can use the new bolt on the original bolt mount, but there's a little bit of a gap right here. So it's not quite as integrated. And then with the original bolt, you can't use this on the new bolt mount because of this little portion right here that it creates that nice streamlined profile. So you see it just kind of stops right there. And then the same thing goes for the new bolt on the Rome mount where that won't work at all. And then just like before, this mount is similar to a quarter turn Garmin edge mount, but it's oriented a little bit differently. So if you already do have a bunch of Garmin quarter turn edge mounts on your bikes, you can purchase this little Wahoo to Garmin adapter that's sold separately. That just goes on like that. 
And then for maps, the new Bolt has 16 gigabytes of storage, which is up from the four gigabytes that was found before. So there's gonna be a lot of wiggle room there. And then for actual navigation and routing on the device itself, you can retrace your current ride if you're already mid ride, where it literally just backtracks your route. So you can see here, it just points you back on the route, which I took, which is indicated with that thick black line. And you can also see cues from that route. Then there's the route to start feature, which is different than retrace ride, where it tries to figure out the fastest and shortest route back to your start location, which in this case is a different route than I took. And again, it gives you the turn cues. Then there's the take me to feature where you can choose a location on the map using the buttons to pan around the map. And you can also zoom in and out as you wish. And it was pretty quick to calculate that route as well. And then there's also option down here to change the surface type of the routing. So if you're on a road bike and if you want to avoid dirt, you'll probably want to choose the road option. But if you want to include dirt paths or trails, you can choose one of the other options. And then on the device itself, you can see all the synced routes and you can sort these with a few different parameters if you happen to have a bunch of routes. And it's nice that it displays not only the route, but where the route actually came from. And then during navigation, this is where that new display comes in really handy, where it has lots of detail and it's just easy to know where you're supposed to go with those black chevrons. The additional colors also make different types of roads and paths easy to distinguish. I mean, it's just a really nice experience. The cues that come up for each turn have a nice green background to them and they were pretty responsive for the most part, but on a few occasions, it's a little bit slow to respond, but that could just be a pre-production thing. And then after you've made the turn, it gives you a next turn instruction just to give you a heads up. There's also rerouting in case you go off course. And on this ride, I purposely tried to throw it off as much as possible, making a whole bunch of wrong turns. Like here, I went off course and it did give me a very logical path back to the route right here rather than making a U-turn. And I tried this so many times and it was really good. And now when you load in a route, it has this smart elevation feature, which shows you a chart of the elevation grade on that route, which is super handy just to inform you of how much pain is coming up. So just like in the main data page that has the perfect view zoom feature that allows you to display just the number of data fields that you'd like. So if you're a minimalist, you can whittle that down. But if you'd like to see all sorts of data, you can do that too. And then for GPS and altimeter accuracy, it was pretty much spot on where on this ride, it was identical to a couple other head units as well as the Strava corrected elevation figure in the center screenshot. So it's all good there. And then for the actual GPS track accuracy, this ride had everything from tight turns to wide open straight sections. And I was pretty impressed. What I was most impressed with was right here where I went through a tunnel and you can see that it nailed it and it didn't wander a little bit wider like the tracks that are in green and purple. And then for indoor workouts, you can also use it to control your smart trainer if you have one of those where you can control resistance and all that good stuff. Overall, the new Bolt has been pretty solid for me over the last couple of weeks of testing. I like all the new features and that new display really is a joy to use. But if I did have a few complaints, I would say that the startup is going to be a little bit slow, just like the original Bolt as well as the Roam. And I actually wish that they used the exact same mount as the original Bolt. So if you owned an original Bolt, you'd have an extra adapter that would have perfect compatibility with the new Bolt. But again, it still works, just not perfect. Anyhow, if you liked the video, if you found the information in this video useful, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more and i mean plenty more sports stack that's right around the corner in the meantime happy riding and we will see you in the next video